What is up guys, it's your boy. Why do my Iron Banner engrams always give me trash tier armor? Cacus, and today we've got some brand spanking new Destiny 2 news, courtesy of the Bungie weekly update that has just gone live, revealing official information, and oh my goodness, it's a big one this week. And so, let's get started. Now, first things first, what's been going on this week for Destiny 2? Well, the beginning of the TWAB actually recaps that info, so let's just dive into it. Uh, first off, on the Tuesday weekly reset, we had the third developer live stream. This one was going over even more content coming in the upcoming Destiny 2 Into the Light free DLC, with the main thing being the return of both the Whisper exotic mission, where you would go and get the Whisper of the Worm exotic snipe rifle, as well as the Zero Hour exotic mission, where you would go and get the Outbreak perfected exotic pulse rifle. However, both of these are going to be different this time around. So, Bungie says specifically, we announced the reprised versions of two classic exotic missions, the Whisper and Zero Hour. These reprised versions will retain some familiar elements of the classic missions, but you'll also find updated puzzles, encounters, rewards, and triumphs, as well as new secrets to discover on Legend difficulty. The Whisper will be available on April 9th with the launch of Into the Light, and and Zero Hour will be available in May. Specifically for The Whisper, they say Eris Morn wants to pick your brain. Nothing creepy, she just thought she could use uh, your memories to share an updated version of a weapon that would be very useful against the Witness. Yes, it's The Whisper of the Worm, the exotic snipe rifle that lives in your power weapon slot. Just be careful when jumping around in the dark because sometimes we don't remember things like they used to be and you don't want to drown in the deep. And then for Zero Hour, they say Ada 1 has a mission for you. You need to go back into the old tower, take down some fallen pirates that want to get a hold of a very powerful weapon of our past, and maybe, just maybe, face a scary robot called Trevor that feels very lonely and wants to give Guardians a hug. The updated and craftable Outbreak Perfected Exotic Pulse Rifle is waiting for those who manage to avoid him and finish on time. Now, speaking specifically about the additional crafting options, they say after obtaining the exotic weapons from each of these reprised missions, new quests will become available. These will allow you to unlock additional crafting options, including upgrading each weapon's unique intrinsic behaviors. A new quest will become available each week for three weeks. So this is going to be very similar to, you know, the Wishkeeper exotic bow or the Revision Zero exotic pulse rifle, where the first time you go through, you can earn the weapon, you can craft it, you can use it, and then every additional week, you're gonna unlock more perk slots, perks, etc., to improve that weapon. And during the live stream, we actually saw, like, the Whisper of the Worm can actually get field prep for more ammo reserves. That could be a big deal for damage output. And then the Revision Zero can actually get um, rewind rounds, again, gonna massively improve that damage output. Now, in addition to that, guys, as you can see right here, there's also going to be two new exotic ships to earn, uh, one for each of those exotic missions, where they're going to be slightly different than the OG version. Now, Continuing from there, we also saw three new PvP maps, uh, the Eventide Labs taking place on Europa, then we saw the Cyrus Plaza taking place on Neomuna, and lastly we saw Dissonance taking place on a terraformed pyramid ship. And they say we'll have a deeper dive on these maps as we get closer to the release date. Also, uh, character recustomization is going to be arriving as well. And moving on from there, another thing arriving on April 9th is going to be uh, the ability to change your name again. Now, also something that was like touched on in the live stream that but we definitely don't know too much about is the Pantheon event. So they say, we shared a few words about Pantheon, the new raid boss gauntlet starting on April 30th. In Pantheon, you'll have the opportunity to face raid bosses in a weekly challenge with escalating difficulties and rewards. This is a chance to rally your clan or use your fireteam finder to take on this challenge. We'll have more details as we get closer to release. So 
very, very interesting. We really don't know too much about it, but if it's done well, it could really give endgame players something to strive for. Now, something else important that was announced during this live stream is another live stream. It's the Final Shape developer gameplay preview, and it takes place on April 9th, just before the release of Into the Light at 9.30 a.m. Pacific. So very excited to see uh, some Final Shape gameplay. And also, if you tune in and you have Twitch drops enabled, you can get this new emblem. Now, moving on from there, guys, we have a PvP Strike Team update. And they're going over some of the changes being made in update 7.3.6, which is arriving on April 9th with Into the Light. So first of all, we have competitive. So what they're doing is removing survival and countdown rush and replacing them with 3v3 clash and collision. And they say for collision, we have changed some zone placements on the map like Dead Cliff and Vostok based on feedback from labs. And then for clash, we'll also be swapping out the ammo meter system for the ammo crate system. And then they go on to talk a little bit about why they did that. But moving on from there in Trials of Osiris, they say that for the first two weeks of update 7.3.6, we'll be experimenting with it to gather additional data. In the first week of Trials, we'll be running what we refer to as the unrestricted special ammo crate system, where all four ammo crates spawn every round one by each team's initial spawn and two in neutral locations, and players who have special ammo will drop it on death when they are killed. We will use this to draw a baseline for an upper limit of special ammo in the trials environment. And then the second week, we'll be moving back to a restricted version of ammo crates, where only two crates spawn each round, the ones by each team's initial spawn, and while players will still lose special ammo on death, they will not drop special ammo bricks. This variant will end up with special ammo availability being between the current ammo meter system values and the previous respawn values. And they say, during these first two weeks, we will gather substantial amount of data and feedback on how both ammo amounts feel and play, and they're gonna use this to inform future decisions. Moving on from there, they have some not swap improvements and in competitive, in update 7.3.6 and in trials for the first two weeks while we run those ammo experiments, we'll be rolling out an improved version of the not swap modifier, which will now remove ability energy if you change the ammo type of a weapon in your kinetic or energy slot mid-life. We are implementing this change because uh, being able to quickly and freely swap between weapons mid-engagement nullifies the downside of using a weapon with limited ammo and pushes the risk versus reward proposal out of balance for making those choices. Now, moving on from there, they actually have a pretty crazy update to their terms of service where they announced they're going to be potentially banning people trying to bypass their matchmaking systems, specifically people with Smurf accounts. So what that is, is if you're a high skill player, you have an alt account where you try to lower the skill as much as possible, you jump off cliffs, you lose every game, and then when something like Trials of Osiris arrives, you use your Smurf account and you match other low skill people because there's skill-based matchmaking, right? For the existence of skill-based matchmaking, there's been people trying to manipulate skill-based matchmaking to their advantage, right? And so Bungie is potentially gonna go after uh, these people. Now, I'm gonna be really interested to see the reaction of the PVP community. On the one hand, yeah, Smurf accounts are annoying, on the other hand, I mean, we have blatant cheaters with unlimited ammo, should Smurf accounts be the priority? I'm sure that's gonna be the debate, but again, very interesting update here. Now, moving on from there, however, they have some corrections from uh, last patch notes, and you can see those right here. But moving on from there, uh, these are the bigger changes, the Into the Light weapon balance update. So. For the weapon archetype changes, 
First of all, breach loaded grenade launchers. They're increasing the impact damage by 40%, and this works out to a roughly 15% damage buff, though total damage varies depending on the blast radius stat. And they reduce the disorienting grenade radii, uh, both damage and disorienting, by 15%. So a little bit of a nerf for disorienting grenades, but other grenades are just going to hit like a truck. In fact, a while back, uh, Zur was actually selling an ignition code grenade launcher with slide shot and spike grenades, and I recommended to pick it up because you can do a crazy amount of damage with that, but man, I got roasted by people saying that no one uses uh, those type of grenade launchers for DPS. Well, now they might. It's funny how many Destiny players forget that Bungie literally goes in and changes the meta dramatically like once a month. So absolutely, it's always worth getting unique combos because you never know when they're going to be top of the meta. But seriously, if you do have any grenade launchers, uh, breach loaded grenade launchers with spike grenades especially, absolutely try them out when uh, Into the Light launches. But moving on from there, guys, lightweight bows, uh, they're actually going to increase the base damage by 6%. However, Le Monarch and Wish Ender are not affected by this change. Then, precision frame 450 round per minute auto rifles are getting their damage reduced by 5%. After that, we have precision frame hand cannons, 180s, and they are getting their base damage increased by 6%. And then for adaptive frame, 140 rounds per minute hand cannons, they're getting uh, their body shot damage increased by 1% and their critical hit damage increased by 4%. And so both of those archetypes are just going to be more consistent and doing more damage uh, with Into the Light. Moving on from there, for pulse rifles, rapid fire pulse rifles, uh, they're increasing the body shot damage by 3.5% and increasing the crit hit damage by 1%. Then for lightweight frame pulse rifles, increased body shot damage by 6%, increased crit damage by 3%, and then adaptive frames, increased body shot damage by 5%, increased crit damage by 2%. Then for scout rifles, for the rapid fire frames, increased base damage by 2%, and then for precision frame shotgun, they said corrected a rounding issue that was causing precision shotguns to require one extra pellet to kill max resilience guardians. So hey, now your shotgun is going to be more effective against titans, basically. After that, guys, we have some big changes to exotic weapons. First of all, the Whisper of the Worm, it's coming back, it's craftable, and it's also getting a buff. They're going to increase the total ammunition from 18 to 24, and that's before reserve mods, so you can potentially, and also that's before... The fact that you can also get field prep now in the crafted version, so potentially you can really get a massive amount of reserve ammo for the Whisper, and the total DPS output is going to be significantly improved. After that, the 1000 Voices, they've increased the total ammunition from 7 to 11, four more rounds. That's definitely a big buff there. And then the Quicksilver Storm, they say it's one of the top PvE primary weapons. Yeah, it's pretty darn good. And they're going to nerf it. They've increased the shots to trigger rockets by 50%. And they've reduced the grenade area of effect damage versus combatants by 37.5%. Rip, Quicksilver Storm, you were goaded. After that, the uh, last word, they're increasing the base damage by 6%. And then the Forerunner, they're increasing the base damage damage by 6% as well. Wow, okay. After that, guys, we have some changes to perks. First of all, the Recluse is coming back along with the Master of Arms perks, but they're reducing the damage bonus from 20% to 15%. I think it's still going to be amazing. Master of Arms will give you a damage boost if you get a kill with the weapon you're using that has Master of Arms or with a different weapon. So it's basically built in harmony. It's pretty wild. After that, uh, the Magnificent Howl perk on Luna's Howl, they say the number of precision final blows before reloading affects the total rounds granted with increased range and damage. Precision final blows while Magnificent Howl is active extend the duration for additional rounds. 
Then for the micro missile intrinsic trait now uh, for the mountaintop grenade launcher. They say they again redesigned this perk to be intrinsic and rebuilt it to do less direct damage versus players while giving it dramatically more self physics impulse. So you're gonna be able to rocket jump with it. They've retuned its PVE damage to be competitive with other breach loaded grenade launchers and they've granted it slightly increased reload speed. Now importantly remember back when we talked about uh, the breach loaded grenade launcher a buff they actually mentioned and so the mountain top feels as juiced as it deserves. So the mountain top is going to be hitting pretty hard like it is technically going to be getting this uh, buff that 40% direct impact buff when into the light launches. Now Moving on from there, guys, they also fixed an issue where permeability was causing the Slammer Sword to always be strand, and they have some Crucible-only changes as well. They say uh, reduced flinch taken by all primary weapons by 15%. Then for the Sunshot, they've increased precision damage by 11%, and for the Wish Ender, they've reduced its base damage by 5%. And they've also corrected some weapons getting incorrect ammo amounts uh, for the meter rewards and crates. After that, also starting on April 9th, they're going to be reducing the cost of strand fragments from 200 strand meditations down to 100. So if you're someone who hasn't bought all of them, well, now is your chance. Also, we have the new light tutorial skip and the new light kit. So we have a, a, some big changes if you want to uh, get your brand new player friends into the game. So they say ride to the tower with an Arcadia class ticket starting in Destiny 2 Into the Light, after completing the second New Light mission, Shaw Han will ask you to sync with his ship in the Cosmodrome, providing a new option to leave the New Light tutorial early and head straight for the tower. The option to skip the tutorial will remain for the rest of your time in the Cosmodrome, and no matter when you leave, you will still receive critical rewards like your ship and your sparrow. So don't worry about missing out if you decide to skip. The ship will remain in the Cosmodrome for the duration of A Guardian Rises, that quest, uh, so players can can choose to not skip immediately and can do so anytime afterwards and you can see a screenshot of all of that right here and here's kind of the option so you can explore the cosmodrome do the classic new light quest kind of get your bearings or you can just skip all that join right to the front lines and basically this is a great option for again friends it's like getting your brand new friend you don't have to wait hours for them to do that new light quest they can just skip it join right in with you, do some strikes, and just kind of get boosted uh, really early. You can take them through a DLC campaign or whatever you want to do, and uh, so that's overall going to be an awesome thing. They also have tools for the job for new light kits. So they say to help bridge the power gap between new guardians and or more seasoned players, and in that scenario I just described, players will now be able to head to the tower and choose a kit handpicked from Ikora and the Vanguard. New light kits are bundles that contain a curated set of gear and subclass abilities. These kits are themed around specific subclass fantasies to help provide players with a shortcut to build crafting and give them a taste of that sweet, sweet space magic. There are nine kits in all, one for each light subclass. Players can claim one per class. You can see what that actually looks like right here, you can choose between Voidwalker, Dawnblade, and Stormcaller, and the game is recommending Voidwalker. And then specifically, when you pick, you know, Voidwalker or Dawnblade or whatever, like if you were to click on Voidwalker, here's actually what that kit contains. So you get two legendary weapons, one exotic weapon, four rare armor pieces, and a legendary class item, and subclass abilities such as aspects and fragments. They say, in addition, new light kits will also grant players a short quest that, when completed, will grant them a piece of exotic armor. New light kits will be available to all players, so whether you're a new light looking to gear up, or a returning player uh, looking to step into the modern sandbox, or a veteran player looking to jumpstart a new character, you can kind of use these to your advantage. This could be really interesting. I'd love to find out what exotic weapon you get and if it's different. Same with the um, exotic armor quests. Like if you pick Voidwalker, do you get a specific quest for the Controverse Hold exotic gauntlets, right? Like those are specifically great with Voidwalker. And then if you pick Dawnblade, 
do you get like the Phoenix Protocol exotic chess piece, right? Like that's actually going to be very interesting. And if you do get different stuff for every option, I'd love to maybe do a guide on like what the best overall option is going to be because yeah, like that's gonna be a pretty cool addition, guys. Moving on from there, Bungie also mentions that Iron Banner returns this week and the absolute god tier Tusk of the Boar grenade launcher and the Multimax CCX submachine gun are live with this Iron Banner. I just did a video on the Tusk of the Boar. It's linked right up above. Basically, all right, it's a strand forbearance. Literally, it's the only other waveframe grenade launcher in the game aside from the forbearance that can get chain reaction. So your strand builds, if your strand builds ever wanted a forbearance that was strand, here's your chance. You know what I'm saying? You could also think of it as a forbearance that goes in the kinetic slot. So it opens up way more build possibilities. So it's, it's very good. You should probably get it. Moving on from there, we also have the Legend Challenge for Onslaught. They say, with the release of Into the Light, uh, the first three fire teams that complete all 50 waves of uh, the Legend difficulty onslaught, they're going to get this Shaq's head right here. Moving on from there, guys, that's actually it. That is going to be it for the video. Hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.